God did it. Well, let's see, Monday morning. Did you talk with Jesus? Welcome to the 0900 prayer request. Enjoy the song before we begin. YouTube video, the name of the song, God Did It. Welcome to the 0900 Prayer Request. Enjoy the song. It's a YouTube video. Name of the song, God Did It. Good morning. Welcome. This is a YouTube video, the name of the song, God Did It. Welcome to the 0900 Prayer Request. Enjoy the video, YouTube video, name of the song, God Did It. Come on, Amen. Well, welcome. Again, here we start out again. Monday morning here in M Missouri. For you folks that are from... I'm Bill Lytle, your conservative candidate for state senate. 
I'm not a Let me uh, turn this off here. All right, we'll get going here in a minute. Monday morning. What's today? The 26th of September. All right. We can listen to that music. Just keep rocking for Jesus, huh? Let me get something playing in the background here, folks. Something a little bit slower. You millennials can't handle the pressure. <laughs> All right, that ought to get you rocking today. Well, you know what it's about. This is the 0900 prayer request. If you've been here before, you know what it's about. All right. If you're not, it's the first time you've ever been here. We'll take a deep breath. All right. <laughs> this is the 0900 prayer request. My name's Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Well, so, you know, you just got to get to understand what we're about to begin with. So we'll talk about this one book, the Holy Bible, the Protestant Christian Bible. This is the only book. One, you can take all the other books in the world, all of them, pile them up. And they mean nothing compared to this one book, this one. All you need in this world is this book. And once you understand what this book is about, then it's going to be about this part of the book called the New Testament. In the New Testament, you're going to hear the story about a new covenant made with man through this man, this God-man, Jesus. You out there in Periscope land, you're going to read these words in this new covenant, this new testament. And you're going to decide, do I want to have Jesus in my life? Do I want him as my Lord and Savior? You're going to read those words in the New Testament. You're going to read the words of Jesus and you're going to decide, Millennial, Gen X, and people like myself, the baby boomers. Do you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Are you going to obey the truths of Jesus? Are you like so many so-called Christians that have substituted this, these words of Jesus in the New Testament of the Apostle Evangelist for some church doctrine? Substituted these words and created your own rule and regulation by your church doctrine. And that's what you obey. Is that the kind of person, Christian, you are? You millennials and Generation X, you're no different from all other humans before you on the old planet. For 2,000 years, every 100 years, people in that 100-year sector has to make a decision. You want to believe in Jesus or not? It's the same question. Every 100 years, that generation, everybody in that generation, they include you millennials in this IT age, information age we're in now, internet connected world. You're going to decide just like your forefathers decided before you, your grandpa decided, your great grandfather, and all the way back for 2,000 years. Are you going to believe this is the same book? The, these thoughts haven't changed for 2,000 years. You're going to hear them out there, you millennials. Not some watered-down Protestant Christian church doctrine, but you're going to read these words and you're going to decide, do I want to follow Jesus? You will decide that. Okay. You're going one day, you're going to read it, and you're going to say, well, I think I will. What's up? This is what's up. This is what's up. This. And this part of that book. The question remains, What's up with you? Are you going to accept Jesus into your life? Or are you going to continue to reject Him? Do you want them good old boys? Or 
you one of those that, uh, well, I'm a good person, I don't hurt anybody? Are you one of those? Are you Mr. Bindi Pliable? Yes, I will follow Jesus also. Okay, well, that's good. Why do I denote it? some skepticism in that? It's the 0900 prayer request time. It's about prayer. It's about talking to God, asking God to help you in your life. It says, Jesus did, not me, that if you ask the Heavenly Father anything, that He'll do it in your life. Wow, that's a lot of light, isn't it? So, if you want to know something about Jesus, if you want to know something about your life, you ever wonder what your real purpose is here on this planet? Well, the only way you're going to find out your purpose and destiny in life, why you're here, it isn't to marry that gal that you're married to, or that husband you got, or kids, or some job you studied eight years of your life to, to obtain some degree, something behind your name, dentist, doctor, nurse, whatever, master's business. You think that's your destined purpose? Not at all. You'll get all that done if you think you should be a pianist. If you think you should be whatever, architect, lawyer, cop, whatever you think you should be, if whatever you think you're called to do, whatever you feel like your inclinations are, what that counselor told you on the campus, you should shoot for this in your life. You've got all the training and this is your field. Don't believe it. You have no, hey, good morning, you have no idea of your destiny and your purpose in life if you're not spiritually born again. All you can do is guess around. Guess and say this and say that. All right? You have no idea. When we talk about being spiritually born again, and the only way you're going to find out of how to be spiritually born again is when you read the book. The book, the Protestant Christian Bible. This is the only book. There's no university book going to give you your destined purpose. There's no course of study going to reveal to you your destined purpose. Only this one book. This is the only divine inspired book from God to man. And you're going to read this and then you're going to decide. You, looking at me right now on Periscope. You will decide, do I want to believe this book about what this man Jesus says? <coughs> the decision is yours. I don't need to convince you, and I don't need to defend God. All I can do, and all I'm obligated to do, is to bring the truth to you. That's it. These are the core. This is the basic thing of, about your life, is understanding these three things. These are the building blocks of your life, your physical and eternal life, your physical body, your eternal future, is understanding these three, grace, justification, and repentance. If you don't understand these three, you'll never be fulfilled in life. You'll continually bump around in life trying to figure it all out. You'll find somebody hook up with. You'll get married. You'll have kids and still be lost. You'll run to some Protestant Christian building with a cross, with a cross, cross, <laughs> with a cross on the top, thinking you're being a civil human being on the right track of civility. I mean, really? Blind leading the blind. The buildings with the cross on the top are not interested 
in explaining this to you. You know why? Because they are not in the things about God. They're into their Protestant Christian denominations. Hey, hi there. Welcome. This is the 0900 prayer request time. My name is Missionary Norm Nitker. Hello from Rome. Oh man, you right in the right in the heart of the the Antichrist people, aren't you? Wow. It must be difficult for you. It must be difficult. I can only imagine the hostility that is exerted over anyone that's, that stands true to the Protestant Christian Bible in that part of the, the world. Yes. I imagine if you live in Rome and come across that Antichrist Pope there, and the Roman Catholic people, I believe you're in as much danger as the terrorists of the Middle East. Hey, son. Pope, yeah. Pray for me. All right, I don't mind praying, but what's your prayer request? My name's Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, been one for 40 years. For my breakup. Pray for me for my breakup. Okay? <laughs> Come on, what what do you mean breakup? What are you talking about? Pray for me for my breakup. What are you talking about? Girlfriend? Boyfriend? Wife? Husband, break your china dish. What are you talking about? What do you want prayer for? Be specific, okay? Amen. <coughs> Be specific when you ask, that's all. God's in the answering business, right? Right here, we're in Missouri, all right? Again, my name's Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. And we believe only in this book. The Protestant Christian Bible. And only the Protestant Christian Bible. New Testament. Have you wondered why at times you're unable to hear and understand what you're destined purposes do you ever wonder why the world is just seems to be rocking along and you're not part of it have you wondered why hey welcome this is the 0900 prayer request time my name is missionary Norman Edgar I'm a Protestant Christian missionary been one for 40 years all right believing only in this book the one and only the Protestant Christian Bible. And only this part is the ruling guide for today's spiritually born again Christian. The New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. As you read, you understand, you're going to decide if you're going to obey Jesus. You're going to read his words and you're going to decide. Not by what anything I say. Or what somebody in a building with the cross on the top says. It's all on you. All right? The Generation X, Millennials, you're going to read the words just like the generation before you. And you're going to decide. Nobody's going to twist your arm, beg, or plead. Oh, please go to church. Please go to church. Oh, please believe Jesus. It's not going to happen. You know why it's not going to happen? I want you to look at what Jesus said. Alright? You can see that? Get up a little closer. You can see what that says? This is what Jesus said. This might be a little shocker to a lot of people. These are the words of Jesus. You're ashamed of Jesus and his words, the Bible. You don't want to talk about the Bible. You don't want to share about the Bible. 
Jesus said he'll be ashamed of you. And let me tell you something, if Jesus is ashamed of you, you're going to the lake of fire. You better hope he says to you at that day when you pass from this earth to him, that he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. All right, you better hope that's the words. But rebellion is rebellion. People have been in rebellion against God as long as, since the existence of our now known planet. Man has been fighting against God every millennial. Billions of millions and billions of people resist this book. You ever wonder why? Why would people choose to worship trees and animals and concrete statues? Or say they don't believe in nothing? Or to say they believe in some higher power or whatever make-believe fantasy land they want to create? And yet this book is about love. And yet there's so many people resist that. You ever thought why? That's a power of evil. Sin is pleasurable. Why do you think the Muslim faith is so strong? Now the Muslims, why do you think that faith is so strong? Why do you think the Roman Catholic faith is predominant also? In each case, it's male-dominated. Islamist male domination. That's why there's. That's why it's so huge. Billion of people. Billion people in the Islamists. Why it's male dominated. Roman Catholic Church, it's the same way, male domination. And let me tell you something, evil is evil. And men, women too, and teenagers, enjoy evil. It's pleasurable for a season. That's why we got the Roman Catholic and Muslim, they're equal. They're just like Buddhists and Hindus and animists, the Mormons, Jehovah, they're all the same. Male domination, Mormon, male domination in the Mormon church. And now, you know what's happening now in the United States with the murderous rampage of American women against their own babies, 60 million since 1975, predominantly white American women. You go into a church house today, you know who's trying to dominate the church? Women. On one hand, you got male domination, then on the other hand, you got female domination. And in the whole mix of everything, there's no Jesus domination. It's an it's a absolute sham. The Protestant Christian churches of the day are a sham. They no more believe this book, the truths of Jesus the Apostle and Vengeance, than a man in the moon. Every denomination, every Protestant denomination has their own doctrine. They have substituted the words of Jesus. They pick and choose what they want to believe. They do it. <coughs> All right? So why is that? Why do you think they continue to do that? Sin is pleasurable for a season. Evil. We live in an evil world. So, how can you get shed of that evil? Can you get shed of your evil? Your lousy things that you do in your life? You know what it is. Self-centeredness, just thinking about yourself, whether you're male or female. You that listen to me on Periscope. You that watch my videos on Twitter and YouTube, Facebook, VK, Path, Tumblr, Flickr. Every day these things are going out all over the world on this video because I make a web page for each of these so they're up on the internet too. And by chance, one day you're going to hear or see part of this if it's on for 15 seconds like much of Periscope is. Let's see where we're at today. Let me look here. Hold on.
As of yesterday, Sunday, we're at 226,673 hearts. We're at 17,133 views. And those views are really short. They're only, they're only good for about 20 to maybe a minute and a half in length from any one person at any given time. Now, there's, there's exception, but generally that's all it is. All you're going to see when you come on Periscope is just a little bit. And most of the time when you see something like this, you see this pop up in your face, you, <laughs> you, you millennials and Generation X, you're out of here, you're gone, you're history. Why? Well, you know why. You don't want to hear that Bible thumping talk. You don't want anybody saying thing, man. You want to see an elephant dancing on a tulip. You want to see some weird sexual thing. You want to see somebody doing some idiotic trick. Do you want to know your destiny and your purpose in life? Do you think that university degree is going to get you there? It's not. Whatever your job is now, Millennial Generation Action, you'll say things like this, man, I'm in my, I'm doing exactly what I want to do in life. You're kidding yourself. If you say, oh, I got the best husband, the best wife, we got their little house in the suburbs, everything's going good, no real problems, I'm on time, my mortgage payments, I'm controlling my credit, everything's smooth, and I got a new iPhone. It's only going to last a season. This is the destiny book. This is the revelational book about the purpose for your life. And if you reject the Protestant Christian Bible, you're rejecting your own destined future. You can't see in the future, but God can. So when you become spiritually born again and you submit your life to be a worker for the Lord as a missionary for Him, the same God, Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, these three in one in this spiritual substance, they know the future. So when you give your heart to Christ, it's present. It's now that this transformation happens when you meet God's requirements. But God knows the future. So when you give up the right to yourself to the Lordship of Jesus, hey, hi, when you give up the right of yourself to the Lordship of Jesus, that's when God will begin to reveal to you your destined purpose. You cannot understand. Hi. Hi there. You cannot you cannot understand or know your future apart from being spiritually born again. Accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior and living your life according to what you read in the New Testament. Not your interpretation. What you actually read of Jesus the Apostle and Evangelist. You have to do that. You're going to decide, Him. are you going to do what Jesus said? Amen. Amen. You're going to do it. Not me. Not somebody in a building with a cross on the top telling you what you should do and shouldn't do. No, no, no. Stay away from those buildings with the cross on the top. Don't go there. You'll be a follower of that man. What that man thinks, that's what you'll follow. You'll follow that man in that building with the cross on the top, the way he thinks about Scripture. You'll follow his way. If you like him, you'll follow right down that rosy path of destruction. This is the book. This book alone, the Protestant Christian Bible. This, the New Testament. You, you, and you alone will read. You 
you will decide if you want to follow Jesus. You will decide. Nobody else. I won't. If you got to run to someone and say, Oh, I don't understand. What's this mean? Luke 12, 12. Luke chapter 12, the 12th verse. The Holy Spirit of God will teach you and bring all things to your remembrance. The same Holy Spirit that can save you will teach you and instruct you and show you the way of life for you. Not for me, not for someone else, but for you. Your destined purpose, your future is only known by God. When you hook up with Jesus, when you grab a hold of the cross of Calvary and hold on to Calvary's cross, Jesus is going to take you into that death and baptism and raise you up and you're going to ascend up out of that spiritual death into the newness of Christ to be resurrected and at the right hand of God the Father along with Jesus because Jesus said when I'm there at the right hand of the Father I'm going to intercede for my believers. You want to be in the arms of Jesus? You want to be in the right place all the time? Stay close to Jesus. When you say to the Lord, I want to be your missionary, I want to be your follower, Heavenly Father, that's the day that God begins to show you your destined purpose, your reason for being on this earth. It's not about your wife or your husband or your children or some kind of building with a cross on the top. That's not what it's about, folks. God's got a plan for each and every one of you. And that plan revolves around leading people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's going to be this one command of Jesus alone. Go teach and make disciples. No other. That's what it's going to come down to. Do you think you're going to be some hotshot song artist and write these songs and make millions of dollars and fly around the world and have concerts? That's all just a lot of you're doing. The glory of this world, meaningless to God. You might sell a billion records or CDs, iTunes. You might have a thousand million subscribers. Nothing meaningless. If you're not leading people to the Lord and Savior. It's the 0900 prayer request. My name's Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, been one for 40 years. Believe in only this book, the Protestant Christian Bible. That's it. No other book. And the only thing that's binding today on the spiritually born again is the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. This book, the Bible, the Holy Bible, our Christian Bible, first translated into English in 1500. That book and that book alone is what it's all about. Prayer. God put it on my heart to come on Periscope in January of 2016. I've been coming on every day at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time right here in Missouri. And that's right here. Missouri, right in the center of the U.S. That's what it's all about, folks. It's about loving on Jesus, okay? That's what becoming a Christian is all about. It's about staying true to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It's not about anything else. It's only about that. Today, it's about Jesus. Okay? It's about loving on Jesus, keeping Him first in your life. 
No matter how this Monday, the 26th of September, we got a real cool morning. I guess our first cool fall morning here in Missouri. The flowers are changing. The flowers are dying. Going into their winter hibernation. Their winter sleep. The leaves will fall from the trees. All will look solemn and barren as the lifeless cold winter comes upon the land. It's almost like the, the vision I had a long time ago about the vine growing. And I was in this vision. And in the vision, a green vine was growing and I walked amongst the green vines. And I was walking and I'm gay and want to be straight. All right, well, I have some advice for you. Yes, I can help you. All right, are you in the U.S.? Are you in the U.S., number one? Japan. Do you have a good connection? Uh, internet connection. Hey, hi there. Hi, Charles Two. In Brazil. Thank you, Charles Two. All right. I'm gonna read you something, and then, but don't, don't click off on me, okay? Hold on. Let me get my paper here. Hold on, Japan. Hold on. Hold on, Japan. Don't go away. <laughs> All right, hold on. I got it here somewhere. All right, Japan. Now, I want to... <coughs> There's something that few people really understand. Hey, hello, old man. Hi, young lady or young man. I'm going to read this to you. All right, this is double space, so it doesn't take long, okay? You still with me, Japan? Japan, you still there? Is that a yes or no? Japan, are you there? I guess he's gone. Okay, I'm here. Okay, here we go. Hey, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? How old are you? I can't tell by your picture. You look like you might be about 28. Ah, oh, 27. Okay. Well, listen, listen to this, okay? The Bible, the, this, this book, first off, God says... He sent Jesus in the world to save the world and not to condemn the world. That's this book, the Protestant Christian Bible, okay? And the truth from the New Testament, okay? <clears throat> in the New Testament, there's only one particular sin that God talks about, the character of the person that commits this particular sin, male and female. Nowhere else in the New Testament does God talk about the character of an individual in the detail that he does about this one particular sin. Now I want you to listen to this. Now I and keep in mind, Jesus said he was sent to the earth to save the world and not to condemn the world. So listen. Sexual practices describes an individual's character as the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament states. Seeking out and practicing abnormal sexual relationships. I, I put this one page together, all right? Practice sexual acts on each other, women with women and men with men. 
<coughs> Those who seek out and practice this abnormality suffer within themselves. Their practical lives increase in obtaining more wickedness. These individuals seek out more sins to do. They become hoarders and their personal greed abounds. Hate grows increasingly within their lives. Jealousy is their common bedfellow as they are involved with others. Murder is acceptable within their lives. Quarreling is their conversation. Deceiving others continually is normal practice. Men, mean and vindictive behaviors towards each other is the common thread uniting. Gossiping replaces normal conversations. Gaining your friendship only to deceive. They not only reject God, they hate God and God followers. Arrogance towards all others. Pride and boastful is their way of life. They invent new ways to commit acts of sin sexually or otherwise. They're consumed with no respect for their parents and other senior elders. They refuse to understand the plain truths of any subject. They say and promise with the full knowledge of not fulfilling. And this is just a little bit left. Within their private lives, there is no compassion or mercy. They fully understand the wrongs against society that they commit personally, morally, ethically, and can be held accountable for their actions, private and publicly. They, the men and women, the practitioners of the above described actions, know full well the harm that they bring upon themselves and to all others within society. However, they continue willfully, without any shame or regret, and further encourage others to do the same. Now I'm going to read you this last part right here. This is from the book of Romans, the first chapter. I'm sure you know it. The first chapter, verse 27. And the men, this is from the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relationship with women, burn with lust for each other. Men did. Okay, about your blue bacon, hang on. And the men having instead of having normal sexual relationship with women, burn with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. Verse 29, their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. Verse 30, they are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways, new way, ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless, and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die. Yet, they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. Japan, when I read that, 
I have great sympathy for that person that is caught and practices that, that type of behavior. Jesus was sent into the world to save the people and not to condemn the people. All right. So, I know if you practice that particular sin, <coughs> that, all right, you have the choice. No. <clears throat> Number one, you are a human being. You were born in sin, just like every other human being on the planet. Whether you're in Africa, the Middle East, Japan, China, you're born a human being in original sin. Okay, I, I, I need to explain something, I guess. Just forget about you for just a minute. Don't think about you and your problem. Just, if you can, if you could listen to this. You want to become a Christian, is that right? You want to be a spiritually born again? Right, I don't know your feelings and I don't I don't need to know. Okay. So my question, do you want to be spiritually born again and become a follower of Jesus? Is that what you want? I'm so far. No, my question, do you want to become spiritually born again? Okay. Do you want to become spiritually born again and be a follower of Jesus? Is that what you want? Do you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Is that what you desire? Okay. Do you want Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Okay. All right. Well, I do not know Jesus. Yes, I know. I realize now. Okay. My advice to you is to, you're going to have to work through your own issues. You're going to have to go to a psychiatrist. You're going to have to go talk to your mom, your dad, your friends, and try to figure it all out by yourself. All right? Look, I know it seems a little bit hard, but this is about, this is the 0900 prayer request. I could use a no, they work. <laughs> All right. Are you? Now, I'm on. I hope you can stay with me. I'd like to answer that about the work question. But this is the 0900 prayer request, my friend there in Japan. And this prayer request is based on this book, the Bible. And the prayers are answered by knowing this New Testament knowing Jesus as the Son of God, the God-man Jesus. If you want to be spiritually born again, this book and this book alone explains how to be spiritually born again. If you're not interested in Jesus, then you're on your own. Okay? <laughs> 
you have to make it out. You're going to have to continue traveling down the highway of the world, that broad way of destruction. Okay. I will try. Uh, I'm not sure what will you try. I don't understand. I will try. I don't understand. What do you mean you will try? Try what? What will you try? Try to believe him? No, 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 no. It's not, you don't have, <laughs> I don't know how good your English is, but you don't have the option. You can't say, oh, I'm going to, I think I'll try Jesus. If it works, okay. If not, okay, too. No. It's not a, it's not a pick and choose. You don't have a choice. Okay? I know it sounds strange, but you have no choice. Right? Okay. Again, I don't know how good your English is because I don't speak Japanese and I apologize for that. Yes, I know. Many religions. Many, many. Mucho. <laughs> I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. I've been one for 40 years. Yes? Okay. I've been a Protestant Christian missionary 40 years. Five missionary tours in the Southeast Asia. Malaysia, Guadalupe, Penang, Singapore, Bangkok, Chiang Mai, and up in the Himalayan mountains. All right. And then seven years into... Uh, no, I didn't go there. But Penang, Singapore, Guadalupe, Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Mae Hong Song, all right? And then seven years in Mexico. It's the same problems everywhere. Election. All right. So, I want to show you something, Japan. Yes, many problems. Japan, I want you to see this. Well, all right, Japan, can you take a screenshot? Take a screenshot of that, okay? All right, Japan, take a screenshot. Okay, got it? All right. This is from... Ephesians 2.8. That's a New Testament book. Alright. Alright. Mr. Japan, for example, you want, let's say you want to become a Christian. Example only. For it is by grace you have been saved. Saved means becoming a Christian, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He saves you. Jesus saves you from the sins. And I want to be straight from the beginning. Yes. Okay, listen. It is by grace you have been saved. You become a Christian by grace. Wait. Through faith. You have to have faith. And how do you get faith to believe in Jesus? It's by grace. And this faith, not from yourself, it is the gift of God. What is the gift of God? Grace for you to believe. So, God's grace has to help you for you to become a Christian. You cannot decide. I'll try to be a Christian. You can't. No way. You will fail if you try to be a Christian. Okay? So, here in Japan, I want you to take another screenshot. Yes, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. No, okay, and I can say that. Now I want you to take another screenshot, okay? 
these three points. Straight, yes. All right, you got it? All right. All right, Japan. <clears throat> here's, the, here's the honest truth. It's all up to you. It's not up to me to explain in a particular way or if I'm a good teacher, bad teacher, da 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 da. It makes no difference. The final absolute decision about what we're talking about, this book, this book alone, this, the New Testament, the total absolute responsibility is on you. You're going to have the conversation. I do not have that book. <laughs> well, you can get one online. You can read it online. Google it. Protestant Christian Bible. The, the Protestant Christian Bible is this. It's our English Bible. All right, take another screenshot. Go online. Come on, you're in Japan. Look, take another screenshot. No, cheap, free, free. Free, take a shot. All right, got a screenshot again? All right, good. You're on the way. All right, so here we go. I'm going to explain these three things to you. This is a foundation. Yeah, the church is anybody. It doesn't mean. All right, now look, Japan. You're going to have to listen now, okay? You listening? No cross chanting here. All right, you want to listen? Okay. All right, here we go. Grace. <clears throat> what is grace? How should we understand grace? So we begin by saying this. This spiritual substance that we call G-O-D, this spiritual substance that's so huge, so immense, has so much power that it can just think and make things to be. Can make entire worlds, moons, stars, galaxies. They come into a physical existence by the sheer force and power of this spiritual substance that man calls G-O-D. This spiritual substance has created all that is in the past, in the future. All that is this spiritual substance. And within this spiritual substance was the Father, was Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And I'll explain that a little bit later, but this is the beginning. Grace. Okay? Grace. God, this spiritual substance, created Adam and Eve. Okay? Adam and Eve were here. They were to live eternally. They were innocent. They did not know right from wrong. They were super intelligent people. Adam named every animal that was brought before him, okay? Adam and Eve did not know right from wrong. They were completely innocent. They were going to live eternally, okay? <coughs> God told Adam only, do not eat of this one particular tree. Now, we don't know how long it was that Adam finally disobeyed God. But eventually, Adam disobeyed God. And he ate of that tree. His wife, or Eve, offered me, they. Immediately, sin and death came to man. That means he was going to die physically and spiritually was on the road to death. But G, uh, God said in Genesis 3.15 that in the future, Genesis the third chapter, the 15th verse, God said to Adam that in the future there was one going to come from a woman, the seed of the woman. 
and that that person was going to crush evil. All right? Now, this spiritual substance that we call G-O-D, we cannot begin to understand, to comprehend this spiritual substance called God. This spiritual substance created us, you, me, all six, seven billion people on the planet. Eva is Jesus' mother? No. 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 Well, yeah, she's the mother of all living, but not Jesus. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. All right, she was a virgin. Okay? So, back to, we're talking about this now. Stay, stay focused. Mr. Japan, we're staying, we're talking about grace. I do not believe. Okay. I guess we can stop then. Okay. <laughs> this is the 0900 prayer request time. So. No, it's okay, whatever he is. <laughs> I think everybody that goes on the internet's a troll in one in one way or the other. I troll, you troll, everybody trolls. Okay. All right. To the is that person still there about to work? Are you still there? Are you still there when prayer for work? Are you still on with me or not? All right. All right. All right. Mr. Japan. Thank you for your questions, and I, I hope the best for your life, okay? You know, you say that in regards to your work situation that you've prayed and you feel like your prayer is not going anywhere. Is that is that what you're saying, basically, or am I reading into something? haven't been for years. What do you mean? Are, are you the one to ask for prayer about your job that you... Yes. Well, Mr. Japan, I, I hope the best for you. Okay? If you don't believe, you don't believe. There's no, there's no more. There's no sense in me talking anymore. Okay? You're not listening, so you've already met. You're welcome. Have a great day in Japan. Tell your mother and father hello from Selma and I here in the U.S. We love you guys. We hope you love on Jesus, okay? <coughs> so, the, the person... Okay, great. Thank you for listening. I hope that you'll change your life. And believe on the Protestant Christian Bible. Uh, you're looking for the best religion. Well, you just, it just went by you. You didn't realize it, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, the person about the job. Have, did you, did I misunderstand? Did you pray about a job? Is that what you said? Okay. I have before, and there was, you have prayed before, and there has been, there was no answer, is that what you're saying? Yes, okay. Well, do you mind if I ask you how old you are? You sound like an old guy. Generation Xer. 33, yeah, you're in the Gen X. <laughs> you're getting old, man. <laughs> Well, well, 36, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's your thought? What, I mean, what's your real things about? What's your real thought about Jesus? You think it's all real? What's your real thought about Jesus? Oh, indeed. 
What's your, what would you say? What would you, okay? So you, you think Jesus is real? Is that right? <laughs> I've been near myself. Hey, God, where you at? Hello. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> years. <laughs> Are you a Christian? Yes, I heard about it. <laughs> Do you? Uh, I guess you better give me a name. Okay, you got a first name I can use so I won't get you tangled up with somebody else. I'm seeing other chats. Tate. Okay, where are you, Tate? What's your name? Uh, a uh, Jeltron. All right, Tate. You in the U.S., Tate? Louisiana. Did I talk to you before? Tate, did I talk to you before? No. Okay. So are you Cajun or not? Are you Cajun? Are you French descent? Not originally from here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I spent time down here in Lake Charles. Okay. Do you think you ever really stuck here in the port now? Yeah. I tell you, I can tell you a story about down there in Lake Charles. That's a, well, it used to be a tough place, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe the attitudes change. Okay, clean up the flood. Ah, the flood deal. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Well, that's a job's a job. That's one way you gotta look at it. You need to work. That's for sure. <coughs> Do you think you ever really had, Tate, do you think you ever really had a, a real relationship with Jesus in your life at one time? That's right, I agree. I think so. Uh, I'm a Muslim, is that a problem for you? No, I think it's your own personal problem being a Muslim, okay? I have, okay, well Tate, Let's just, what do you want? What do you want? Let's just put it that way, Tate. What would you like to see happen in your life? What would you like to see happen? Muslims, do you like Muslims? Muslims are like Roman Catholics and Protestant religionists and Buddhists and Hindu, they need to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior and to believe only in Protestant Christians, but just don't feel close anymore. I like to see the hand of God move in your life, right? Okay, all right, Ted, here's what I'm gonna pray and see if you agree with this, okay, my friend? I want you to think about this today, that you're going, now, you know that you've given up on hearing from God for a long time in your life. Is that That's pretty correct, right? You just don't think about it much. You're just working every day and doing your own little life, doing your own thing. You kind of just put God in the back somewhere. You still believe him, but he's not really in the forefront of your life, correct, Kate? Basically, like a lot of other people do, I might add. You think that's pretty correct, that statement I'm making? Well, welcome to the club. That's how I became a Christian. I cursed out God. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's how I got saved when I was 28. That's a true story, too. And I got done, then I realized it was all on me what I chose my own life, right? That's a normal thing. Don't think you're abnormal at all. Things stop making sense. Yeah, that's right.
Tate, I just want you to know that here's what's here's your part and here's my part. Jesus is not God and God's not son of Christian air. Okay, great. Thank you for your comment there, Mr. Muslim. Tate in uh, Louisiana. When people first get to know Jesus in their life, Jesus is right there, right now, all time, real time, real time. Boom, 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 right there. You can see the hand of God working in your life. Boom, boom, boom. And you see it all the time. And uh, you walk with the Lord, He walks with you, and you can just give Him praise and glory because you just see Him opening doors and going into a store to buy something and be on sale 50% off. You're thanking God, you know, it's the hand of God's blessing on your life. You go to buy a car, you get a great car deal, you just know it's God doing it. You want to get a mortgage on a house, God opens that impossible door, you know it's God, you give Him praise and glory. So you're praising and glory in God in everything you do because you see His hand because you're close to the Lord. Now, the person that gets away from the Lord begins to go down that big old wide highway. It's kind of like that old movie, The Walking Dead. Them WDs are all walking in a herd, right? You're just in the midst of that herd, walking on down life's highway. Wherever the herd's going, that's the way you're going too. You know I mean you don't you still think you're controlling, but you're going with the herd. And now you say, I want to get out of that herd. Okay. You took my fan, so I guess I'm mad still. Okay, well, God didn't have nothing to do with that. All right? You got it. You just got it. I know it's your family. And I know you're close, but that, he's not it. He's not the reason. It's sin and evil. Or sin and evil is the reason. All right? Just, we, we can talk about that, but I'm, let me finish this thought with you. When a person walks with God and thinks that God's with him and all that he sees God, he believes God begins to walk and then diverts off that pathway and goes on to the broad way of destruction destruction in your life in your life, not your, not your family just you personally we're talking about now and then you want to come back to the Lord you want the Lord to be real in your life so you're, of course you're going to do the ABC steps you're going to ask for forgiveness you're going to forgive everyone that you've wronged you're going to forgive God you're going to accept God's forgiveness everyone you wrong, you're going to forgive them if there's restitution you need to make physical restitution if you stole something you need to make that right if you broke the law, you need to get that right. If you go to jail, you go to jail. Simple as that. You know, it's not a big deal. You'll get over it like everybody else. You make that things right, all right? You return to the Lord, right? So then, you begin to read this book, all right? Again, the New Testament. Here, the New Testament, the Bible. No other book, just the Bible. You read the New Testament. So you see all the truth. You see, ask God anything in Jesus' name. He'll do it. All the promises. You read all that again. So you're believing. Okay, so take you're believing everything again. Let's say, let's say today you do as I say. Okay, let's say that you give your heart back to Jesus. You forgive, you accept God's forgiveness, don't blame God. Let's say you get it all, let's say you get it all straight. And that's all you do, confession of your mouth, that's how you do that. But here's the kicker, son. Here's the kicker. Because you walked away earlier in your life, now you're gonna have to go through some real trials. I mean, they're going to be hard pressed too. And every obstacle that comes up today, and let's say you do it right now this morning, what time is it? It's 10, 10 o'clock in the morning or so here in Missouri. 
If you gave your heart back to Jesus today, this afternoon, tomorrow, the trials and temptation will be intense. They'll be intense for this week, next week, next week, next week, next week, next month. Okay? You understand? You and every trial that's going to come. Okay? Okay? Every trial, temptation, every give up thought you're going to have, suicidal, it makes no difference, drug, drinking, women, sex, it makes no difference wherever you go. The temptations are going to come back at you. It's going to be tenfold stronger. Because you turn from the truths of the Word. All right? But here's, here's the kicker. <coughs> Every trial that comes before you now, you'll know it's a test. And you're going to say to yourself, I'm going to pass this. I'm not going to give in to this. You can either get upset or you can trust Jesus. I'm going to believe Jesus no matter what is happening in my life. If I lose my car, I'm going to trust Jesus. If I lose my job, I'm trusting Jesus. That's the way of the man that walks away from God when he wants to come back. He easily accepted to walk into the house of the Lord. Right? You can come back to the Lord and he's going to be just as close to you. But rest assured, trials and testings will be severe in your life. And as soon as that time period is over, you'll be a strong, walking, talking for Jesus. No doubt. No despair. No depression. No feeling sorry. But you're going to go through the trials because you walked away in unbelief and doubt. So you, when you get it right, then the trials are going to come on you big time. The old devil's going to try to trip you up right from the get-go. But just remember, they're coming, just like the Bible says, the New Testament says. Don't think it a strange thing when them trials come on you. And in your case, and all people that turn from the Lord at some time in life and they want to come back, they go through the same thing you're going to go through. The circumstances and situation are totally unique and they're just for you, designed for one purpose. Remember, that old filthy lion killing devil is God's devil. And he's never going to allow more than what you can handle in your life. That's a promise from God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's what the Word says. Don't let that devil keep you down. It's a mental decision you're going to make. If you want Jesus as your Lord, just like I was talking to that guy in Japan, he couldn't he couldn't handle that that Jesus was God. Just like this Muslim guy who keeps chatting in on us, he can't he can't handle that. He won't believe because someone has told him that's not so. All right? The Muslim people, like the Roman Catholic, are deceived. They're like the Hindu and the Buddhist. They're deceived people. They're only talking about things they've heard someone else say. You can't, you can't understand. You'll never understand God. What you what you need to realize that when you ask for forgiveness, God says that you're forgiven. He takes everything you say to the Lord and He puts it in the sea of forgiveness, never to be brought up again. If anything about your past is ever brought up to your mind, it's not God doing it. It'll be either you 
or the devil, because he, he's watching. He's roaming this earth, seeking who he may devour. He hears what you say. If you can continually confess with your mouth your depression, what do you think the devil's going to do? Well, this guy, don't, he thinks he's going to die anyway. Just, well, push him on over. Go, go 150 miles an hour down the highway. Get drunk. Do drugs. You understand? Uh, you got to be careful what you do and say out of your mouth. The adversary's looking. But that old devil's not dumb. All right? That devil's out to kill and destroy you. <laughs> well, you can. You have the power through the name of Jesus. You have the power over Satan. But the greater power is within the word love. God loves you, Tate. He's not giving up on you. He said, Jesus said to the Father in this spiritual substance called God, Father, send me down there in a human body. I'll save that Tate down there in Louisiana. I'll free him of sin, guilt, and condemnation. I'll free him. I'll take all of his sins of unbelief and doubt. I'll bear them on the cross. And he did that for you, Tate. Read the Word. Believe the Word. So I'm going to pray that you will return to the Lord but no, the fires of trials and testings will come immediately upon your life. So don't think it a strange thing after we pray. So if you're in agreement with what I say, I'm praying you'll return to Jesus and accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. If you agree to that, that's what I want to pray. If you agree to that, that's what I'm going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for Tate right here in Louisiana. You know, Heavenly Father, right where he's at, the room he's in, the place he's at, you see his life and everything about his life. Your tender mercy and love, your forgiveness and love, is what sustains all the believers in Christ. All those that have been spiritually born again have been forgiven and loved by you. And that's that love for your son Jesus that compels us to move forward, to go teach and make disciples around the world. That love, your love, Heavenly Father, I pray this now in Jesus' name for your, your mercy, Heavenly Father. I pray you just touch Tate's life, his family and all the relatives and all that were involved in the great tragedy in his life. And I ask Heavenly Father you just help him. Put your loving arms around you. Just touch his life and help him. Reignite his light. Let him be a lighthouse. Let him be a light in the darkness that surrounds his life. Let this light break forth to shine upon all that come within the range of his voice and his life. Let your glorious light of love and forgiveness emanate from him this day, Heavenly Father. Let your great mercy and love touch his life. I pray this 
Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it. Amen. You're going to be okay, my friend. God's going to touch your life. You bet, my friend. Jesus is Lord of all. He loves you, guy. Amen. Have a great day at work. Have a great day. We love you. All right? Never forget that. All right? They're spiritually born again people. All right? Amen. God bless you, Tate. Tell everybody hi now. Tell your mom and dad. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Tell your friends and relatives hi, brothers and sisters. Amen. Follow Jesus and everything will be okay. All right. Tell your work fellow people that's doing the flood work. Great job. All right. It's the 0900 prayer request time. It's about loving Jesus. And that's what it's all about, folks. Loving on Jesus. All right, my friend Tate. We love you, guy. This is the 0900 prayer request. It's all about Jesus. It's about grace, justification, and repentance. When a person becomes a Christian, when he begins to follow the Lord Jesus. Okay. It's about that. Okay. Prayer. Prayer is a pretty simple thing. It's about talking, communication. It's nothing difficult about praying. If you want to pray, you can. It's about talking with Jesus. That's all. That's all there is to it. If you want to believe God, you can. You know, a lot of people make requests to God, and a lot of times it they think their prayer is not answered. A lot of times the prayer is answered, they just can't see that it's answered. We get our mindset sometime about things that we, I, it's happened to me several, several times in my life. It's not Alzheimer's or dementia either. That I'll totally not remember that this is the hand of God making something happen. And sometimes things happen, and you cannot, as a, as a spiritually born again believer, sometimes you can't, you can't understand why you go through different trials and testing in your life. It seems like it's counterproductive. But yet the Bible, the New Testament, hey, hi there. The New Testament truths of Jesus, the apostle and evangelist in the Protestant Christian Bible says that when you're spiritually born again, when you're a follower of Jesus, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. All things. Can you imagine what tragedies work together for good? And the greatest tragedy isn't so much the physical, but I honestly believe in my life, I'm 70, I've been a missionary 40 years, the greatest tragedy, the greatest hurt is the emotional hurt. I've went through that myself. And I and I honestly can say I don't I don't think that I'm totally healed from that yet in my life. And I think Selma, my wife, we, we, you know, we got married in uh, 2013, 2013. And there's aspects of her life that we've talked about too. That she she hasn't been totally healed by the uh, her emotional situation in her life that she experienced too. So emotions, you have to kind of keep the emotions in check. Emotions aren't faith. Emotions are just that. You, I, one thing that's really disheartening about, hey, hi there, hello. One thing that's disheartening about the full gospel 
Trinity Pentecostal charismatic type services is that a lot of times they'll get very emotional. And on one, on one level, it's exhilarating to see people excited for the Lord. How are you, my dear friend? I'm fine. I'm good, 7-7. Seven, seven. All right? But when you come back to a service within a Trinity Pentecostal church, whether it be in India, whether it be in the United States, Australia, Europe, Asia or Southeast Asia, you return to a full gospel type service, charismatic, Benny Hinn, Copeland type service, some kind of uh, crusade, and everybody gets emotional, everybody gets really hopping up and really excited for God. And then when the evangelist or whoever, whatever it was, when, they're, when they left, and the next week comes, and there no, there's no grand, glorious thing of expectation again. And the leaders, wherever they may be, male or female, they try to gin up the crowd with music, band, guitars, drums, whatever. Singing songs about Jesus, trying to get everybody hopped up again. But apart from all of that, when you walk amidst the people, and this is where I walk, as a Protestant Christian missionary, I want to remain with the people. And when I walk amidst the people, I see that people's lives aren't really changed. They have been instructed that you only can feel good about Jesus when you get all emotional on a Sunday or whenever the church service is. That's when you get emotional and you can really feel great on this particular time in this particular building. Jesus is God, yes. So, but during the week, the people are struggling. They're not happy. They're not fulfilled. There's anxiety. There's sometimes resentment, hostility, problems in the family, fighting, bickering. There's no harmony. Yet these same people who say they're a Christian will go to a gathering and become all emotional and everything seems to be on cloud nine. But then when they leave the church house, I know it happened to me. And I know that of my 40 years as a Protestant Christian missionary, I've seen it happen with most people. So I began to ask myself, why is that? Why do people, when they leave the church on Sunday, and they go back to their nine to five job, they never talk about Jesus, nothing. Just nine to five in life going on, wherever, what part of the world they're in. Why? Then when Sunday comes around, it's back to the same old thing. Jesus is God. Why? Because this book, the Protestant Christian Bible, the only divine inspired word from God, says so. So I ask myself, why is a Protestant Christian that say they're a Protestant Christian, why aren't they in a victory like when you see them on Sunday? And the truth be known, and this was a hard thing to understand about Protestant Christian religionists. Protestant Christian religionists are in the US, Canada, South America, Australia, Europe, Asia, and Southeast Asia. Protestant Christians, for the most part, are deceived. And do you know how they're deceived? This book, 
this one book that's been around 2,000 years. This book, this book alone. No other. And the New Testament. This is what is the rule and guide for today's spiritually born again Christian. I come to find out my 40 years, five missionary tours in Southeast Asia, and seven years in Mexico and all over these United States. I found that the Protestant churches, the so-called Protestant Christian churches, they don't they don't adhere to this. What they believe is their own written interpretations of how they want their God to be like. They go through this book like you're going through a menu at a restaurant. They'll pick and choose what they want to believe and what they want to do. And they write it down on a piece of paper and then it begins to become a denomination. Buddhists do it. Hindus did it. Mohammed did it. Mormons did it. Jehovah Witnesses did it. They're false and meaningless religions. All Protestant Christian religionists are meaningless, false, meaningless religions. Why? Because when you read what their, their message is, it's the interpretations from the Protestant Christian Bible of how they want their God to be like. I love. Well, hi, I love. Okay. This is a sad thing to deal with. So the problem with the Protestant Christian religionists today, 2016, is that the religious leaders are after one thing. And it's the same old sin that's been around forever. Power and control over another human being. I saw something the other day. It's just like somebody throws cold water on your face to make you wake up to reality. And they have, I mean, you can Google what I'm about to say and you'll see it. The wealthiest Christian pastors. Name after name after name, millionaires. Making a dollar on the name of Jesus. Multi-millionaires. People got planes. <laughs> Just multi-million houses everywhere you can think. Millions and millions of them. And they got less. Google it. You think they're, you think these so-called leaders, these Christian ministers and leaders, you think they're concerned about your soul and you going to hell or heaven? Not at all. They're going to talk to you this sweet, good time message and how you're going to be successful at whatever you do because God's with you. That's a devil message. Many are called, but few are chosen. The great gospel message of Jesus Christ is to the world, all right? To the world. God sent Jesus to save who? The world. When Jesus died on the cross, his death, the God poured of Jesus, took all the punishment for all the sins of the world, past, present, and future, upon him. It took a God to do that, not some prophet. Jesus was sinless, never committed a sin. He was born of a virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. He was a living, perfect example. He refused to sin. I'm tired of God. Yeah, I believe that. I believe you believe that. Yes, I believe that you believe that God's not listening. I believe you. I've been there too. But you want you want to know how to get away? You you want to hear from God? Do you really want to hear from? I can tell you how you hear from God. You ready for this? 
Do you want to hear how you can today, right now, hear from God? When you pray, you want to hear how or not? Okay. Do you mind telling me what your first name is? Okay. What's your first name? This guy says, yes, yes. What's your first name? With that scary face on your logo. <laughs> What's your first name, man? Devon, okay. Devin. All right, Devin, where are you at? You in? Uh, you outside the U.S. or inside? You in the U.S.? USA, Philadelphia. Wow, what a place. All right, beautiful place. Okay, let me just give you a clue here. And uh, you're an intelligent guy if you're from Philly, all right? You've been around the block. You know what's going on with this thing about being a Christian. Your mama and daddy or your friends, all right? So you know about it, okay? So you're praying, okay? Hi, my name is Awesome Show. Yes, okay. So, can you give, would, would you mind giving me an example of the types of things you pray and ask God for? Can you give me an example? You don't have to go into detail, but what, what have you recently or in the past you asked God about and you got no answer? Can you, uh, do you remember what it was about? I asked for a more social and family mostly. God did it, all right? You know who did it, all right? All right, job and family, okay. All right, Devon, like I said, I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. I've been one for 40 years. I believe only in this book and only the New Testament. I don't follow any church doctrine of anybody, only this book, all right? I associate with other people that are followers of Jesus that believe in the Protestant Christian Bible truths of Jesus, the Apostles, and the Evangelists. Right? Number one, five missionary tours in Thailand, seven years in Mexico. I don't go church to church asking for money. God calls you, God will make a way. Right? And how he chooses to do that is up to God. But my book tells me that New Testament tells me Apostle Paul worked, and so I worked too, to support the ministry and do the ministry. We have a non-for-profit incorporated in 1978, five family missionary tours in Southeast Asia. Kids and all, God made a way. I don't go to church to ask for money. So I'm not just whistling Dixie at you, all right? When you pray, next time you pray, here's what I want you to do. This takes a little discipline on your part, Devin. All right, this is gonna be a little. This is a little. This is gonna be a little toughy for you. But here's how I want you to pray. I'm 70 years old. My wife Selma's 69. When you pray, I want you. You're gonna have to get alone, of course, in private. And you're going to sit down in a room, shut the door, all right? Just be in a quiet place, your car, wherever, out in the park, whatever. But you can't have any distractions. Now I want you to sit down for a time of prayer. And you're going to sit there, and you're going to let your subconscious 
ramble and ramble and ramble on. Your subconscious is going to bring up everything you think you should be doing. All right? And slowly, slowly during this time, you're going to be saying to yourself, I want to hear from the small, still voice of the Lord to speak to me. And I'm asking you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, to speak to my mind and heart, Father. Help me to hear you, Heavenly Father. Help me not to focus on these other thoughts and distractions that are come at you. And you, if you ask, because God made a promise, if you ask in the name of Jesus anything, He's going to do it. Now here, normally, here's what happens. Let's say that you are in a prayer mood. You're Okay, you're going to pray. So you start out. And you say, oh, I love you, God. Love you, Jesus. Da, 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 da. You say all those things, and you really mean it, too. And then you say, Father, I'm asking about a job. Please speak to my heart about what direction I should go, what I should do. Here's what happens a lot. Not just a little bit, a lot. All of a sudden, the subconscious jumps up and says, Oh, man, you, you heard about that job three weeks ago by your friend talking about this or that. And then all of a sudden, you say to yourself, Oh, that's God. Yes, that job. Yes. Oh, then you jump up. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. You run to that thing that happened three weeks ago, whatever it was, however you got the info, your friend or you read about it or something, whatever. And you go back there and zero nothing happens and then you turn around and say ah oh, man this is fruitless i prayed and i got nothing i'm gonna give you an example this actually happened to me and it happened here in missouri and this happened about 40 years ago when i became a christian and that first story i never read the bible i didn't go to churches and all that i was 28 years old i didn't know nothing about salvation when i got saved that first year i was able to read the bible through in about three times the old and new testament so then i began to understand what it's about right and the one thing i began to understand was by you had to walk by faith all right so get this i'm uh, Devin, I'm driving a truck, a little part-time job driving this tractor-trailer truck, right? So I did that because we had to pay off a bill. And so I was involved reading about trusting God by faith. And this is before I started on the mission field, right? So I said, okay, Lord, I'm at, okay, I had a delivery ticket. And it was about 150 miles away where I had to go. So I'd go west on Interstate 70. So then I got up to a junction that turned off the interstate, uh, Highway 61. And I was impressed to make a right turn onto this. All right. Sorry, Mr. Presence. So I, by faith, I prayed and I wanted to see God use me and how he was going to direct me to make this delivery in the truck. So... And I was impressed to go westbound. I started down in that westbound highway. And when I got close, God impressed me to make a right turn. So I made a right turn on this highway. And I'm going down this highway headed in a uh, northerly direction. Nothing else, just, just north. So I go down this road, nothing. I done, I've decided I'm not going to look at the map book how to make this delivery. Okay? So I go down this interstate. Just listen. I go down this uh, highway. And then I'm impressed that there's going to be two ways to go into this town. The first way and then a second way. All right? Do I believe the world's going to end? No. Not now, anyway. It's never going to end anyway, okay? <laughs> but, but let me finish this other story. So, so I'm impressed about two exits to take. So I get to the place, there's the, there's the first one, second one. 
I'm impressed to go straight through. All right, I don't wish, okay. So, I go through the second one, Devon, Devon, and Philly. And I'm impressed that I'm going to come to a stop sign, and the place is going to be right there on my left. All right. So here I come driving this tractor trailer, never looking at the map all the time. All right. And so I get to the stop sign, and I drive through, and I look to my left, and there's nothing there. The place I was supposed to go. I'm from the Ukraine. Hey, hi, Ukraine. So, Devin and Philly, I pulled over to the side of the street there, and I said to myself, wow, this is crazy, Norman. What are you doing? You prayed to ask God to show you the way, and now here, there's nothing there. And do you know what happened, Devin and Philly? I backed up just about 10 foot with that tractor trailer, and I looked again to my left, and right offset, Okay, my English is very bad. Okay, that's okay. And in this little offset, Devin and Philly, there was the business that I had to make the delivery to. And that was my first real time in trusting God. So when you pray, Devin, when you pray, you got to be still before the Lord. And let all of your thoughts run its course in your brain. But you got to be telling yourself, Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I claim the blood of Jesus Christ over my life. I'm asking you, Heavenly Father, for direction in which way should I go? And wait. Wait. Wait for the Lord. He will impress upon your mind and heart. I have up on my website, well here, I'll show you, let me show you something, let me show you, hold on, let me show you something here, you love Jesus, you bet, I want you to see out there, Devin in Philly, you see that swing right there, this is my backyard, okay, we took the pool down. We got a little pool some and I used to exercise in. A little bitty thing you can see there. It's pretty little. But you see that swing over there? I was sitting in that swing. Oh, it's been a month or so ago. And uh, the Lord gave me a gave me a vision about some of the things I was experiencing at that time. It's a very good country, thank you. So, Phil, uh, Devin and Philly, are you still with me or are you, you off, man? Devin, are you still with me in Philadelphia? Looks like he's gone. Okay. This is the 0900 prayer request time. Hey, hi there. My name's Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian. I don't know, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Nah, no, Devin was another guy that was on from Philadelphia in the US. And we were talking about prayer, but I guess his connection got cut off. Alright. This is the 0900 prayer request. Okay, good night. Have a great sleep. <laughs> Alright, this is the 0900 prayer request time. My name's Missionary Norman Edgar. Today is Monday the 26th. Good night. This is 26th of September, and it's 11 o'clock in the morning, a.m., and we're located right here in Missouri. All right? 
There is Missouri right here in the center of the U.S. Okay. This is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about loving Jesus. That's all it's about, folks. It's not about anything else. It's all about Him. Amen. Well, I think that's about it for today, folks. So I will see you guys tomorrow morning again. And that's going to be at 9 o'clock, right? We love you, Selma, and I love you guys out there. Keep the faith.